In this video, we'll be creating a React app, then creating a serverless function in Go, setting up an HTTP endpoint to invoke the function, and then interacting with it from our React app. To get started, we'll first create a new React application using Create React App. Next, we'll change into the new directory and install AWS Amplify using either NPM or Yarn. Next, we'll initialize our Amplify project by running Amplify init. Here, you can give the project a name, the environment a name, the default text editor, and then choose the defaults for the rest of the options. When prompted for your AWS profile, choose the profile that you'd like to use. We can add both the API as well as the function using the Amplify API category. To do so, we'll run Amplify Add API from our command line. Here, we'll choose REST as the API type. We'll give the API a name. Next, we'll need to provide a path. We'll create a path called slash greeting that will return a greeting when the function is invoked. Since we do not yet have a Lambda function, we can now create a new Lambda function. Here, we'll give the function a name and then choose the runtime. The runtime that we'll be working with today is Go. If we would like, we can access other resources within our Amplify project, but since we do not have any other resources, we can choose No when prompted. We can also set up a scheduled event to invoke the function, like a cron job, via the CLI. Since we do not need this functionality, we'll choose No. When asked if we'd like to edit the function now, we'll choose yes. The CLI should open the main.go file in your text editor. This function is located in amplify slash backend slash function slash function name slash src. Here, we'll need to update the contents of this function to be able to respond to an HTTP request coming through API Gateway, and also we'd like to enable cores. To do so, I'll open a repo that I've already created in my GitHub account. My GitHub account is located at github.com slash dabbit3. Here, we'll open the API Gateway, Lambda, and various runtimes repo, and then open the main.go file. Here, we can copy the contents of this file back over to our main.go. Let's walk through a little bit of what's going on. First, you'll see that we have the imports of the packages that we'll need, including AWS Lambda Go slash events and AWS Lambda Go slash Lambda. Next, we'll create a response type that is of the type events.api gateway proxy response. In the main handler, we'll create a body and error variable, and then if there is an error, return the response with the error. In the response, we'll set the status code in the body, as well as headers that set the content type, as well as the cores configuration. Finally, we just return the response. For the main function, we then just call lambda.start passing in the handler. Back at the command line, we can choose whether or not we'd like to restrict API access. Since we want this API to be public, we'll choose no. Next, we're prompted if we'd like to add an additional path. We'll choose no. Now our API and function are ready to go, and we can deploy everything by running amplify push. If you ever need to make changes to your function code, you can go back into the function handler, update your code and save it, and then run Amplify Push again. Next, we'll open the React app in our text editor. In source slash index.js, we'll import Amplify from Amplify, import the configuration from AWS exports, and then call amplify.configure passing in the config to configure our React application to interact with our Amplify backend. In app.js, we'll import useEffect and useState hooks from React. We'll also import the API category from AWS Amplify. In the app component, we'll create a greeting variable and a set greeting function by using the useState hook and setting the default value to loading. 
In the use effect hook, we'll call a function called fetch greeting that we will create in just a moment. In fetch greeting, we'll call api.get, passing in the API name as the first argument and the path as the second argument. The return value will be set in a variable called greeting data. Once that data is returned, we'll call set greeting, passing in the greeting data dot message. We'll then render the greeting within an H2 tag. Now we should be ready to test everything out. To do so, we'll open our terminal and run npm start. Here we'll see the greeting rendered to our screen. Next, let's go back into our function and log out the value of greeting data. When we open the developer console, we can now see the value of the greeting data variable.